Bookish Babes, and welcome to my book nook. For those that are new right here, the name's Rainy Barton. I'm an elementary music teacher and middle school music theater, musical theater teacher by day, booktuber by night. I talk about a bunch of different books. Thriller and horror are my faves, but I also talk historical fiction, romance, fantasy, all the types of things. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, subscribe for more future videos. But in today's video, I thought it would be fun to do a book tag, and so I looked up a couple. I want to make one eventually. I haven't gotten there yet. So today's video is going to be the Do I Have That Book Tag Challenge, and I'm going to post the original creator's video down below. I've seen a bunch of people do it over the last year or two, so I figured it'd be fun to do it. It is a timed challenge, meaning I'm supposed to press go and then just initially see how long it takes me to do and so I'm gonna press go on my uh, phone and see how long it takes me but I'm not supposed to even look at these questions until I do this tag and so I don't know any. I do know the first question though because I like when I researched this tag I saw the first question uh, but even knowing it didn't really help. So I'm just gonna go through each question, maybe let you see just like a little bit of me searching for those books, come back, show you the books that have to pertain with the do I have that book challenge, and then we'll see how long it took me to do this whole challenge by the end. So let's get started. And I am pressing start now. Okay, so the first question is, do you have a book with deckled edges? I didn't even know what deckled edges was until a few minutes ago and I know I have a couple. So I'm going to grab a few. I know I have. <laughs> this one has deckled edges. I know I just got one recently that I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that to have deckled edges. But I can't remember where it is. I want to find more than one. I'll be right back. So this is a fail. I know I have a crap ton of deckled edge books, which makes me think that maybe my other ones are over here. I could only find two and it took me forever to find them, but I have The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. So these are like those nice deckled edges. I don't know if you can see it. And The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I have not read either of these. They're both on my TBR. This one I've heard nothing but amazing things about. I haven't really heard anyone talk about this, but it was appealing to me. So that's the question one. All right, question two. Do you have a book with three or more people on the cover? Uh, 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 I don't know. I don't even freaking know where I would look for that. With three plus people on the cover? Like, what constitutes three people? Like, is it three actual people? Uh, I should do less talking and more searching. Oh, this looks like it would have more. Nope, that's two. Um, that looks like the same girl. I don't think that counts. Oh, here we go. Three people on the cover. Sally Rooney's Beautiful World, Where Are You? Do I have more? Um, probably. Am I gonna look for more? No. I'm just gonna, I'm, oh wait, oh, this one too, right? Daughter of the Moon Goddess? I see one. No, it's just one. <laughs> you know what? This is good enough. This is the answer, friends. Beautiful World, Where Are You? One, two, three, four. Whoop bam Okay, question three. Do you have a book based on another fictional story? So basically a retelling. Yes, I have many of those. I will grab all of them. This one I just picked up recently and it is Lost in the Neverwoods, which I believe is supposed to be like a Peter Pan retelling. So that's one, it's a YA book. I have not read it yet. It's by the same guy that wrote Cemetery Boys, which I also have not read, although I'm super excited to read this. I also have Surfy and Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. These are both Greek retellings. This one is about Thetis and the legendary King Peleus and Patroclus. I don't know a very lot about this. And then this one is about the Titans, Circe and Zeus and all of that good stuff. So these are retellings as well. I have not gotten to either of these yet, but I'm super excited to. I do also have the Cinder series by Marissa Meyer, which is basically like a Cinderella retelling with her as a cyborg. So that's pretty cool. And then the last two I could think of is I have Neon Gods and Electric Idol by Katie Roberts. And these are also, this one's a Hades and Persephone's retelling. And this one is Demetriou and Aphrodite, I believe. Anyway, I have a lot of like Greek historical fiction ones. So that counts. Okay, question number four. Do you have a book with a title that is 10 letters long? I don't even friggin' know, friends. Oh, I just thought of one. Let me see if that counts. I got it on the first try because I literally just got this book and I thought about it and it worked out perfectly. 
And that is Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. So I got this because Books and Lala read it recently. Kayla, we all know, I'm obsessed. And she really, really loved it. I have no idea what it's about at all. It was $4 at the bookstore. So I just said, I can spend $4 and I bought it. I love the cover. So I'm hoping that it is amazing to me as it was to her and to everyone else that has read it. But that's 10 words, baby. Okay, question number five. Do you have a book with a title that starts and ends with the same letter? Freak if I know. Let's go find out. It starts with the same and last letter. Same and last. This does not look promising. I'm assuming it means like the actual like, um, you know what I mean. Oh, here's one. Voila! That was easy or not too easy. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. My M and Exorcism. There we go. Have I read this yet? No. Is this cover not just like the coolest thing you've ever seen? Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty much in love with this cover. I need to read this soon. I read The Final Girl Support Group, which my mom has my copy, and I absolutely loved that. And I also have His Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Haven't gotten to that yet, but... There you go. Number six. Do you have a mass market paperback book? Unfortunately, I do. And I don't have many. So I'm going to grab the three or four that I have. All right. I grabbed all my mass market paperbacks because I don't have a lot. Hence, because I just hate mass market. I just don't like to read mass market paperbacks. But we thrive in and alive here. All right. I have Karen Slaughter's Pretty Girls, which I bought this recently. And I'm probably going to rebuy it to read it in a non-mass market paperback. Because I want to read it. I have Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris. Ruth Wears the Death of Mrs. Westaway. The Green Mile by Stephen King. This was free. It came from a little free library. That's why I grabbed it. No Exit by Taylor Adams. I was supposed to read this in January and I didn't solely because it was a mass paper market, mass market paperback and I was not feeling the vibes. And then I have It by Stephen King. This is my mom's copy, but I might still read this. And then I also got The Shining, which I bought this recently too as mass market. And I don't know why I bought it as mass market because I don't freaking like mass market. But those are the only ones I have because I hate it so much. Okay, question seven. Do you have a book written by an author using a pen name? I'm pretty sure I do. Let me go check. Well, the first one that came to mind is none other than Mr. Riley Sager because his name's actually Tom Ritter. Did you know that? I discovered that recently. Uh, people are saying that he probably changed it because his books were sucking as Tom Ritter and so he changed to Riley Sager to like appeal more to women. I don't know, but I have to ride the night, which I've heard is like the worst book ever. I actually might read this soon just because I really want to know what everyone else is thinking about it. I've also discovered that my son apparently drew in this book at some point. Mother flipper. And then I have Lock Every Door, which I've heard is really, really good, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, he is a pen name. That's the only one I can think of a pen name for right now, so we're just gonna go with it. Um, yeah. Question eight. Do you have a book with the character's name in the title? I don't know about that, Sam. Let me see. Okay, I found him. It was actually pretty easy. I have the Brown Sisters trilogy, which has their names in them. Get a Life Chloe Brown. Take a hint, Danny Brown. And act your age, Eve Brown. They all have the character's name in the title. So it couldn't be more simple than that. That actually worked out pretty easily. So good job. On to question nine. Which is, do you have a book with two maps in it? By two maps, does that mean like, like two pages or like an actual like two map situation? Because I don't know the answer to that. Let me check my fantasy list. Does this book even have a map in it? Not why? Yeah. Okay, one map. Oh, 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 that's two. That's two different maps. We're gonna take it. Okay, thank you, Priory of the Orange Tree, for helping us out in this endeavor. All right, so, um, Priory of the Orange Tree. I have not read this yet. This also is a chunker. It's about 800 pages, and, um, I just... I haven't gotten to it yet. And I actually haven't heard that many great things about it. I feel like people love the romance in it, the sapphic romance, but they don't actually love this book. So I don't know. But it did the deed for us, fam. Okay, question 10. Do you have a book that was turned into a TV show? Perhaps. Let's, let's ponder. What got turned into a TV show? Um, that is a little tough. I know ones that are coming out as movies. I can't think of any that came out as a TV show. 
Oh, oh, I got one. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, which I have not actually read the book yet. I want to read the book. I loved the Hulu one with Reese Witherspoon and, um, what's her name? The girl that plays the main girl in Scandal, Olivia Pope. What is her name? I can't remember it right now. They were phenomenal. I'm really sad that there's not another season. However, it makes sense that there's not another season because that it ends, I'm pretty sure, exactly the same way that the book ended. Um, if it doesn't, I don't know. But I loved that series and I can't wait to read this eventually. So I know that Anxious People is getting turned into a t Netflix TV show and it's going to be in Swedish, I think, because that's where the author is actually from. So you're going to have to have English subtitles, but it'll be in Swedish. So that's kind of cool. And I've heard nothing but amazing stuff about this book. And I've had this book for like a hot minute and I haven't read it yet. So maybe I should push it up the TBR. Okay, question 11. Do you have a book written by someone who is originally famous for something else? Like a celebrity, an athlete, a politician, a TV personality? Mm, ah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I don't actually know the answer to that. I don't think so, but I'll be back in a minute. I don't know if this entirely counts, but we're just gonna take it. She wasn't a celebrity. She was just an everyday person, but like something happened to her and like now she's like a celebrity. So like she wouldn't have ever probably written a book if this hadn't happened to her. We're just gonna go with it. And it's Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which I've been wanting to read for literally forever because everyone's talking about it. Um, but it's about, uh, Chanel Miller and the the guy that had um sexually assaulted her at Stanford University a couple of years back and it's all about her talking out about what happened and like why women are not taken as seriously about that sort of thing as they should be and I've heard like it's very 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 intense and that she narrates the audiobook herself so I'm very excited to read her memoir eventually but we're gonna count that as that topic sure why not? Question 12. Do you have a book with a clock on the cover? Oh, freaking no. Um, a clock on the cover. I feel like a historical fiction one would have a clock on the cover, would it not? Nope. No. Clock. Where's a clock? We're gonna go with no, I don't have one. And if Editing Rainy happens to find one, she will pop it in in her editing section. But for now, she does not have one, okay? Okay. Question 13, do you have a poetry book? I can already answer that right now, no. I do not own poetry, I don't read poetry. Not because I don't really want to, I just don't really know the first place to begin with poetry. So I'm not gonna even bother looking for that because I know the answer to that and that's a no. Question 14, do you have a book with an award stamp on it? I'm sure I do, let's go check. That was fairly easy. It was the first book I saw because it was literally on here. And it is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. It's the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. He's also the one that wrote Cloud Cuckoo Land that I have not read yet, nor have I read this. I've probably not read every book I've shown you so far, if we're being honest here. But you know what? You know that if you watched my bookshelf tour from a couple weeks back. Um, yeah, super excited to read this. I'm sure I have others that also have been award nominated. Let's just see for fun if I can find two more. I cannot find others. I'm sure I have others, but we're wasting time and the clock is running. So we're going to move on. All right. Do you have question 15? Do you have a book written by an author with the same initials as you? So RB. Oh dear Lord. I don't know. Um, let's see. RB. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you like my song? Um, no, that's R.S. I don't think I do, but let's make sure. R.B. That's R.G. The answer is no, I don't. There are no that are RB. I have the like RG, RW, things like that. There are no RBs. So the answer to that is no. Question 16. Do you have a book of short stories? I don't think that I do. I've read short stories before, but I don't typically collect short stories. So I'm going to check real quick, but I think the answer to that is no. I feel like the last few questions have not been that exciting because I don't own any short stories either because I just don't collect short stories. Like... I don't buy short story collections, but you know what? 
It's fine. We surviving. We thriving. Let's keep on going. All right. Question 17. We've got four more left. Do you have a book that is between 500 to 510 pages long? That is oddly specific and I don't know. Um, so let's look at first what would be considered 500 pages. Is this a 500 page book? Oh, 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 this might make it fam. I might get it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's 498. I hate my life. Nope, but maybe this one. Okay, let's try the bone season. Is Samantha Shannon going to let me down? Yeah, she let me down massively. Between 500 pages and 510. I'm pretty sure this ended right before 510 as well. Yes, it did. Okay. It's not looking promising, folks. This looks like a chunker. All the light. Let's see. Oh, 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 wait. No, it went up to like 5.30. Okay. Um, I don't have... All right, let's check the chestnut man. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, why you gotta do me like that? 5.15. All right, Ace of Spades looks kind of chunky. Yeah, no. Let's try Pachinko, shall we? Okay, okay, okay. 485. Dang it! The Nightingale's way too long. I found one finally, fam! It took like 10 minutes to find this, but it is the sequel to the Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, and it is the Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, and it is exactly 501 pages! So it counts. Man, that was a really tough one. Okay, question 18. Do you have a book that was turned into a movie? Yes, I have many of those. Let me grab one. Misery by Stephen King. That is a good one. I love that one. That's one that was made into a movie. We also have... I think this was made into a movie, right? The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. They also have the satire one, which is like the woman that lives across the street from the man in the window or something like that, which I haven't seen yet, but I definitely want to. And then I know we have others. I'm just not finding them at this moment. But you know what? That's good enough. That's two for sure. Question 19. Do you have a graphic novel? And my answer is very sad. I used to have graphic novels. I used to have a crap ton of graphic novels. In fact, graphic novels are all I used to read. And then I don't know what the hell happened to them. Maybe I left them at my mom's. I'm not really sure, but I don't have them anymore. I don't even have one. And it makes my heart very sad. I was literally just thinking about that the other day. How I don't have any and I want to start getting them again. So the answer is no. I don't have any graphic novels. And then question 20. Do you have a book written by two or more authors? Yes, I do. I have two of the writing duos that I know are writing duos. Christina Lauren, which is twice in a blue moon. Um, so Christina Lauren is actually the combined pen name of writing partners, besties Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings. And so they are a writing duo. If you didn't know that, Christina Lauren is not just one person. And then also always the Grace Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen books. So I have The Wife Between Us, and then I also have their newest one, which was literally released in February as Book of the Month pick, The Golden Couple. So I have a couple that are by two or more authors. All right, let's see the damage. I'm pretty sure it was not very good. <laughs> um, and if we count, like, all the times that I, like, paused and searched for things and then, like, searched for other stuff, I could probably shave down, like, five minutes, but our total was 30 minutes and 21 seconds, and that's not very good not very good but you know what it is what it is so that's how this is gonna end well I hope you had fun with me exploring my many shelves looking to see if I had the book I had most of them but when it came to like poetry and graphic novels and things like that I didn't because I'm a lame duck that really only collects specific types of books but that is okay I hope you enjoyed this video I will come and see you in another video super soon and I start to just read more books off of my shelf so I am very sad though that there was no reason that I should have had there was no reason for me to show this very beautiful book that has just been acquired on my shelves like literally look at this it's the Illumicrate version and it's just it's just beautiful I was hoping I would have a reason to like show this again but I'm just showing you it again because it's beautiful now is the book on the inside beautiful 
I don't know. I don't know. But I will see you guys in the next video.